Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Number 45 East. Number 45, 45, 45. Well, should be right down this street on the left, Mama. Oh, Claudia, I should never have let you come. Why, for heaven's sake, Mama. I don't like this business. Oh, honestly, Mama, you make it sound as if I were doing something wrong. Stealing into New York without David's knowledge to beg for a great Dane from two strangers. That doesn't sound like an everyday occurrence Where to me. Where is your wild spirit of adventure, Mama? I'm not going to waste my wild spirit of adventure on this sort of and thing. And in the second place, Betty and George Pringle are not strangers. To my mind, strangers are people whom you don't know personally. Well, I feel as if I know the Pringles very personally. Well, I listen to them every morning on the radio. What they eat, what they do, where they go, what they see, what they like. So they're not strangers to me. You've never met them. That's that. And as for David not knowing? Well, what's the use in telling him till I pass muster? Pass muster? Sure. Claudia, are you sure you told me everything? Yep, I'm sure. I told you that George and Betty Pringle are going to interview me to find out whether we have a satisfactory home for the great day they're trying to place. Oh, they won't let him go into just any home. If it's a good enough home for me, and a good enough home for David, and a good enough home for your son, it better be good enough for a Great Dane. Well, I hope so. A Great Dane is something special. Besides, the farm's already good enough for Bluff. He's very much of a Great Dane. Yeah, I know. Bluff's my biggest asset. Oh, I'm sure when I tell the Pringles that we live on a farm and... That we already have one great Dane. Oh, they'll certainly give him to me, Mama. Either that or they think you're mad. You know, maybe he'll be a her. That'd be nice, especially since Bluff's a he. Oh, dear. I can just see the farm overrun with a litter of small Danes. Wouldn't it be lovely? Unfortunately, Danes are never small. Oh, that's what's so nice about them. Makes them a man's dog. I should never have let you come. Now listen to me, Mama. Now you listen to me. Yesterday, when David and I heard the Pringles talking about that Dane on their radio program, I looked at David and said, Mama, he wants that Dane. He may not know it, but he wants that Dane. Poor David. He gets blamed for everything you want. Well, dogs shouldn't be single any more than people. David knows that. And that's why he wants the Dane. Oh, number 45. Well, here we are. Here's where I leave you. You'll be sorry. Never. Don't, don't you don't you want to, really? No, thank you. Besides, I promised Aunt Louisa I'd be over at 10.30, and it's past that now. Stubborn, that's what you are. I get it from you. Say, Mama. What now? Watch the lights before you cross. Look who's telling who. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll call you Aunt Louisa's later. Cross your fingers, Mama. They've been crossed <laughs> ever since you proposed this wild scheme to me last night but for private reasons. You know, I think you're taking your responsibilities as a mother much too seriously. You're right. So goodbye. Goodbye. I've got it, George. Hello. Hello there. Hello. I, I'm, I'm Claudia Norton. Hello, Mrs. Pringle. Oh, come right in. Why don't you? Well... I'm here about the Dane you're giving away. I knew it right off. You did? Mm Mm-hmm. You had that look. For heaven's sake. Uh, have many people been here before me? Just one. Oh. Oh, don't look so worried. They didn't get the Dane. Oh, what a relief. They lived in a two-room apartment right here in town. No place for a Dane. Mm, I I know what you mean. Too bad, too. He was a nice little boy. Well, little boys should have dogs, shouldn't they? Hello there. How are you? Hello, Mr. Pringle. George, this is Mrs. Norton. Oh, I see. Uh, About the Dane. About the Dane. (laughs) I I feel as if I were being interviewed for a job. Well, (laughs) in a way, you are. Um, Oh, before we talk business, Uh I think I ought to tell you that I like you on the radio very much. Well, how nice of you. Thank you. I listen after my husband leaves for the office. Uh, Most wives do. (laughs) Well, it's not his fault... You see, we live in Connecticut, and he leaves early. Oh, 
You it's live in the not country? His fault. Yeah, on a farm. It's perfect for Danes. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yes, it's perfect. The one we have, he likes it very much. Oh, so you have a Dane already, have yes, you? Yes. Uh huh. Have. They have a Dane already, but. I heard that, Joe. <laughs> oh, but please, don't think because I have one that I don't deserve another. Uh, deserve? You see, I, I don't think it's fair to have only one Dane. Do you? Well, uh, <laughs> that depends on. Whom you have in mind, uh, the Dane or yourself? Well, both. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, have you any other animals? Oh, yeah. Cow, a rooster, a uh, pig, and a, and a cat, of course. Well, quite a menagerie. <laughs> well, it's more of a farm, really. At least the beginning of one. Uh-huh. A cow and a pig mm-hmm. and a rooster and a cat and a Dane. No children? Oh, of course. Just one. The beginning, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh, Quite a little household you're running uh, without another Dane. Mrs. We've just Martin. been craving for another one, but uh-huh. well, as you know, their their upkeep is so high that yes. we've been a little reluctant about making the initial investment. Oh. oh, there's no charge for this Dane. He's from a very good line and just a year old. Uh-huh. Year old? That makes Bluff and this one almost twins. You see, uh, his mistress is very sorry to part with him, but she has to. Uh... Is yours a male or a female? Male. What's yours? Female. Fortunately, they won't fight. No, they won't. (laughs) And we can practically go into business. Practically? Business? Well, you see, this dog is going to be a a surprise for my husband. Hmm. You see, Bluff was a surprise from him to me. Uh, well, Betty, uh, what do you think? I think that maybe I'd like to live on a farm, George. Hmm? You? (laughs) You don't know a pig from a cow. (laughs) Neither did I at first. I could learn. (laughs) I did. Uh, no, I love it. I wouldn't live any place else, and I wouldn't ask a dog to either. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny, George. I have a feeling that it's all right. Then you mean well, you? you... Uh, oh, the doorbell. It's probably somebody else after oh. the dog. Doesn't look like it's going to be hard to give this dog away. Oh, it certainly won't be. Oh, tell them you've given it away already. What? Oh, what'll we do, George? Well, I, I'm afraid we'll have to give whoever it is a look-see, Betty. At least. Oh. And... I'm afraid so. Oh. But I uh, I tell you what, Mrs. Norton. What? Uh, you go into that bedroom and close the door while we interview whoever is next. Uh, yes, do. Why don't you do that Please now? don't give the dog to anyone else. Well, we'll, we'll try not I, to. I uh, think you'd better answer the door, Betty. Uh, now, Mrs. Norton, you step right in here and we'll call you. Now, soon. remember now, I'm trusting oh, you. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. Well, she sure wants that dog, doesn't she, honey? Mm. Uh, George. What? Let's get rid of whoever that is fast. Well... Come on. Well, we'll see. Go on. First come, I always say. Uh, Mrs. Pringle? Yes? Uh, I am, uh, Mr... You're here about the dog. Yes, as a matter of fact, I am. Come in. Thank you. Uh, my name is... And this is my husband, Mr. Pringle. Uh, hello there, fella. How are you? Uh, Hello, Mr. Pringle. Uh Uh-huh. Yesterday I heard your program for the first time. Oh, did you? I, yes, I, I usually take the 804, but yesterday uh-huh. I had an appointment at Grand Central, and I happened to take the 915, and my yeah, wife was in the other room, and she just happened to turn it yeah, on. And uh-huh. I don't usually re- listen to the morning programs, you understand. Oh, you don't. Uh... My wife turned that one on, and uh-huh. you had that business on about the police department and the single yeah. hair. Oh, oh yes, very of course. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was pretty lucky right at the end uh-huh. of the program. You happened to be talking about the dog. Oh, the dog, yes. yes. He's uh, not given away yet, is he? Uh, is he, George? Well, is he, Betty, uh, after all, is he a good dog? The best, out of Hex and Gold and Long Meadow Tigress. Oh, well, they're pretty fine. I, they I know the are. breed very well. Mm-hmm. Oh, you um, know dog. Mm, how old is the dog? Uh, George, now, why Betty, do we... Hey, now, Betty, uh, just one year old. Oh, just one year, mm-hmm. perfect. Well, Mr. Pringle, that's, that's really all I have to know. But oh. from what you said on the radio, you... Need to know quite a bit about the people who are going well, to get the dog. We can't just give it to anybody. You understand that, uh, of course. It's sort of like adopting a baby, isn't it? <laughs> well, I guess you could call it that. We've never done it before, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Well, I'm a, I'm an architect, and maybe you'd like to know that we have a hundred acre farm up in Connecticut. Connecticut? Mm-hmm. Oh, sounds like dog country, Connecticut. Oh, it is. It is. Danes need space, you know. There's yeah. nothing worse than bottling them up. No, no. Big Not dog. for the dog or, or for the people who live with him. Yeah. I, I know because... George, yes, I, sir? remember what I told you just before? First come? Uh, 
I, my wife says her mind's made up. Oh, no, not exactly. You, you see, there's a lady in the other room. Oh, uh, a lady wants a dame? For a husband. You see, you're not quite the first. Oh, I, uh, I was afraid of that. Uh, this lady in the other room, uh, she has a lot of space, too. <laughs> and it so happens in Connecticut. And her husband's very nice. Yeah, her... Betty, how do you know? Well, he must be nice. Well, what uh, makes you think so? Because she's nice. Oh, fiddlesticks. Isn't that a woman for you? That doesn't oh. prove anything. I'll bet he's a no good or he'd have come here himself. Oh, well... That kind of man lets his wife choose a dog. Hmm. Not for uh, I think your husband's right, Mrs. Sure. Pringle. You really ought to reconsider the... Responsibility of a great Dane is really a man's job. Uh, exactly so what I was telling and, my wife before. Oh, no. You know, uh, well, at least you should investigate this unknown quantity of this lady's husband. Uh, but uh, we promised... Now, look, Betty, ten to one, he's a, he's a little guy. Not worthy of a Dane at all. Now, this gentleman really knows dogs. Oh, Thank you. George is getting complicated. Well, <laughs> why shouldn't it be complicated? Yes, why shouldn't it? <laughs> because. Because? Well, that's a good reason. Then... Let's do what you said in the first place. What did I say in the first place? First come, first serve. Oh. I see. Then that means that... Uh, you tell him, Betty. Uh, you don't have to. I was too late, right? Uh, we're sorry. Yeah, oh, we really are. Well, I guess that's that. Then, oh, huh? don't be so disappointed. Well, why shouldn't that be? You don't get offered a great Dane every day. Well, that's right, Betty. Don't tell him not to be disappointed. It's his right. No, thanks he anyway. Well, I'm certainly glad I didn't tell my wife I was coming down here. She'd be awfully disappointed if I came home empty Dane. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. Pringle, Mr. Pringle. Bye. I listen to your program anyway. Thanks well, a lot. That's very oh, nice of you. So long, bye. feller. <laughs> well, he was a nice guy. Mm-hmm. She's nice, too, though. So don't get feeling guilty. Yep. Let's go in and tell her. Betty, I'm thinking. You know what? What? He was such a nice guy. Maybe we ought to find him a Dane, too. Some days you seem to accomplish a great deal very easily, and other times you put in lots of effort without much result. One secret of easy accomplishment is to work refreshed. Take it easy. Pause for ice-cold Coca-Cola. Let that delicious refreshment relax you. Have a Coke, and you'll go back to the job with more zest whether you work with your hands or your head. Mr. King, excuse me, but if you had been George and I, what would you have done? Given the dog to the man and the lady, too. Oh, but we didn't. I mean, the man is quite dogless. Uh, not as dogless as you think. He already has one Dane, now he has another, but the second one is a surprise. Oh, then it's a surprise to me, too. Well, that it is. You see, Claudia and David are married. Claudia and... What did you say? Those two young people are husband and wife. Giving the Dane to her meant giving the Dane to him. Oh, my gosh. Wait till I tell George. I'm not too loud. David's not supposed to know. Not today, anyway. George! Hey, George! Listen! Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.